All right, very good day um, to everyone. Good Friday. Um, best wishes, prayers to all as well. Um, and also uh, best wishes uh, on Easter Monday coming. And uh, today is the 2nd of April to 2021. And I welcome you to uh, Breton's Academy Fridays, uh, Friday's market wrap up. So um, just to give you guys a bit of a, a bit of a view on the Breton Academy, Breton Academy's um, page on YouTube, as well as the one in Facebook. Okay, so we've got the one in Facebook. All you need to do is type Breton Financial Trading Academy right there, and um, we will be posting uh, loads of uh, posts, including trade ideas, signals as well, and uh, any updates that you need to know about the market. And most importantly as well, we will share the links uh, of all our webinars that are upcoming. So there is uh, this is what we can actually use the Breton Financial Trading Academy um, Facebook page to also um, engage with other traders. You guys can actually ask me questions on there uh, directly or even communicate with other traders or communicate and participate in discussions in within a post as well. So this would actually be good for all traders uh, to take part and uh, do that on all of our webinars. Um, you know, I'll be uh, reminding you guys on both our Facebook page um, as well as the YouTube uh, channel right here for Breton Financial Trading Academy with carry all the videos, uh, all the uh, recordings of my Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, as well as some tutorial videos uh, on geometric trading method as well. I'll be uh, posting them there. Um, give me a second. Let me just see. We've got some. Okay. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Oh. Give me a second. Um, I think... At my end is okay for the sound. It is actually, and in a second. Yeah, it's uh, probably at your end. I think mine here, I've, I've checked, it's, it's all good. Okay. Let me just uh, confirm that again. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Um, seems to be everything okay at my end. Um, microphone, yeah, it seems all right, good. Yeah, perhaps check at your end, um, Mr. Colin. Okay. So, all right. Um, so that is uh, basically it on the YouTube uh, channel right there. We've got tutorials, very interesting geometric patterns uh, tutorials. I'm actually just setting them up uh, at the moment, recording them as well. So we've got loads of techniques, strategies, videos to actually share with you. Um, all the past recordings of all our webinars, uh, as well as tutorials. Uh, so you, you can actually have a, a good source of information on there uh, in video format on the uh, in our YouTube channel. So that's basically it. So let's get going into our um, Friday's market wrap up by Bratton Academy. Now, um, there's been a lot of demand in just going straight into gold. Uh, what's going on with gold? I mean, I congratulate um, the majority of traders have actually been riding along a very good trend. I've been riding it as well with um, with the um, inverse cup handle pattern that we have mm -hmm. actually. Um, so we've got the inverse cup and handle pattern for gold and various other correlated pairs as well. Uh, so with that, um, I see that there is an ability to actually ride along uh, gold on the sell side much more. But of course, um, within the week or so, we have had some corrections. Now, there is a question about uh, the solidity of this um, cup and handle pattern. Now, um, the thing about the cup and handle pattern is that uh, the way I look at it um, is that it may actually be forming another pattern at this moment of time because the handle just got higher. So I just want to explain a little bit more about what I see from a technical perspective. Uh, on the fundamentals news perspective, of course, we see um, 
still possibility of um, the dollar, um, you know, recouping and recovering and going up again, or being more bullish uh, from from the, you know, from the new week onwards in April. So we see that that might actually still um, encourage gold's prices to actually fall. Now, with that fall expectation of the fall, I see that um, we have got the inverse cup and handle pattern that was previously explained, uh, previously um, shared to most of the traders. Now, this is how it looked like here. Uh, this is a really small, actually, it's a very small inverse cup handle pattern that I expected for it to actually go up to about 50% at 1716 to then reverse and come back. But that didn't really happen. So it didn't really fail the cup and handle pattern. Maybe it widened the cup and handle pattern. But uh, because of the rise of gold um, as a correction, I still see it as a correction. It went up to um, a certain level where there was a previous high, like a peak as well, right? So that area was actually around here, just before uh, 70, give me a second, let me just change the color on that. So now what we are viewing now, I'll show you um, onto the chart itself, is that uh, we are seeing the possibility of price, well, at the moment going up, but going up to reverse at close to that area at 1744 to 1755. So worst case scenario, yes, gold uh, may have the possibility to go up, but as it go up to this level, and if it does actually stop at this level, and it'll be almost parallel to that previous high area here, what happens is then it, it start to, it possibly, uh, it could possibly um, start to form this, okay? which is a um, head and shoulders pattern. So if it does actually form a head and shoulder pattern, then the signal is still to the downside, but after it has actually broken the neckline here, which is under 1677 and below. So if it does actually break that neckline area, at 1677 and then it goes lower than 16, 1680 and lower or 1677 and lower break under that then we are seeing still uh, more room to the downside for gold so that's basically um, what I have actually seen happening so a lot of traders you know they get a little bit um, panicky at the moment you know thinking that gold uh, could potentially go up uh, a lot more and it's a change of trend I mean in my opinion it's um, not yet a change of trend, uh, but it's a correction is possible. So hence the reason I use the strategies of patterns to actually look at it from a bird's eye perspective to know how much move could it potentially move up to in terms of reversal and then does it actually have got more room to go down or is it a total change of trend now at this moment of time it's not a change of trend as yet in my opinion um, but it is actually gathering momentum to actually correct itself and then I would actually guess more room to the downside okay for for uh, gold versus the dollar so this is what's uh, been happening so far as of today i've just had that screenshot now a lot of you um today is the second of april um it's a public holiday on a large scale um, globally for Good Friday. And then we've got coming Easter Monday as well. So uh, most of the traders are experiencing um, the market is closed for gold, which is uh, true. A lot of brokers have actually announced that as well. Um, so do check your emails uh, with the brokers that you have, um, you are trading with as well for notifications of any sort with any changes of the platform. Uh, maybe you, you may um, notice that currencies are moving but then goal is not, is not or other indices and other um, instruments has been frozen or maybe closed in terms of the market in general so be aware of, of, of all that and check your emails if you are in doubt you can always connect and contact your broker support so that uh, you know you get um, 
you get the best of service in terms of uh, understanding what's going on, uh, whether or not the market is really closed, whether your platform is still operating and various other things. So that's basically really important for us as uh, traders, especially in uh, this time around um, March, April, towards the summertime uh, in the European markets, including the UK as well as the US Can uh, Canadian market, uh, we will experience loads of um, uh, loads of uh, low liquidity, low volume in trading, public holidays, and various other things. Okay, so be aware um, of that as well, because you don't want to be participating in instruments that the markets are closed and there's no liquidity market participation, and then you get stuck uh, into a moving market, live market, but then there's no particip uh, participation of it, and then you get trapped into it because this, the trend will not be formed very clearly as well. Okay. Okay, so there you go. This is with gold at this moment of time. Okay, let me show you the chart. Uh, so this is, um, it has actually been uh, sort of closed. The market is closed for gold and been frozen at that price there close to 1730 area. So uh, this is what has actually happened with prices going upwards, right? So it has gone beyond the 1716 because I expect it to stop at the 16, at the sorry, at the 1716 area and then make that handle and come down. But um, this moment of time, it did not actually do that. So then I've noticed that it uh, probably wants to, um, to create a better pattern, which is the head and shoulder pattern. So with that, I just want to show you, this is the square that we're trading at the rectangle, a rectangular blue area. Okay, let me just uh, show you. Uh, Mr. Kunan, have you uh, sorted out your sound? You can now hear me, I guess, yeah? Okay, so just to check on that. Okay, so with uh, goal at this moment of time uh, for on the four hour chart, okay. Brilliant. So on the four hour chart, this is what's going on. Now, um, it's a good it's a good chance for us to recap and look at it and rest our trades for gold since the market is closed for gold, okay, which is good. Now, because um, a lot of you have actually ridden on gold's trend as well. Um, some of uh, some of you have actually done very well with gold's uh, selling and as well as the reversal buy a couple of days ago until yesterday as well. Uh, so it's a good thing, uh, but what I want to actually point out here is now there is a possibility of a hidden shoulders. This is your left shoulder right here, okay? Now, your head and your neck area, neck starts off from here, going up to the peak area, that is your head area, coming down, okay? So you've got this area right here, as well okay so because usually this area here you know not very even as well so then uh, what's important for us to know is that the right shoulder is now at the point of forming and it's not completed yet it's only will actually complete only if it comes down then you've got um you know this kind of uh, shoulder right here now it's just about to actually uh, form. So what's important is how far would it actually go now? My, my um, what do you call that? Suspicion is that for it to actually become a successful sort of a high probability or, or successful head and shoulder pattern, the price that is going up right now, and uh, now it's at um, close to 1730, right? It needs to actually go to this level here and not higher, okay? So at the level of 1738 to 1741, to actually mirror and be in parallel with the left shoulder. And then if it goes way up, way up, and then it starts to do all its own thing to go bullish, then we've got the probability of more, um, the probability of a change of trend to the upside. So at the moment, uh, this, is, this is the hope in a way, or this is the expectation more like 
an expectation for it to form a head and shoulder pattern. Now, this head and shoulder pattern will still signal downtrend. So as it goes down, if it does actually go up and then it um, um, you know, gets stuck here and then reverse from this area itself, parallel to this area right here, uh, within that area of 1738 to 1741, then you've got the likelihood of it forming, completing the right shoulder, and it still has to break out from this level of 1678. And if it does break that level, then you've got a way long way down for it to actually, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, go down even more. And that's basically a continuation of a downtrend for gold. Okay, so how far could it actually go? We can then, uh, once it has actually broken out from here, we can then apply the geometric um, bearish ABCD pattern because we have got, you see this area right here. Let me just change the color as well. Give me a second. After 1722, uh, no, it's a little bit, let me, let me just uh, confirm that there. Uh, no, um, after 1722, you can, uh, most of the traders, yes, they can actually sell, enter, sell, but under 1720 will actually be a little bit safer uh, because as it comes down, it may have some zigzag as well because if you look to the left, you've got some support area right there as well. So you'll zigzag, but then overall for those, um, because we are trading gold and gold is, you know, spreads are huge and basically we've got uh, smaller traders with smaller amount as well. So we want to be really sharp in terms of the entry. So what I would say is that trade small on a sell from this level onwards, but then as you sell and then make more profit and then it does actually break out from 1678 then you can increase your lot size and make more money and ride along a stronger trend to the downside because my um, expectation for it to become stronger in a downtrend would actually be after 1678 uh, area and below. So that will be a more solid downtrend. So you can increase your lot sizes uh, on the goal for at that time. Now, at this time, after 1722, you want to be a little cautious, um, not too excited with the selling and not opening too big lot sizes, but do it in stages. So here, for example, to help traders understand um, the capability or the size of that trade for the sell side, we can actually use uh, the geometric ABCD pattern here. So let me just confirm that. So what we want to do is make sure that uh, we understand that the price has to firstly um, reverse by at least one or two candles first, the reverse from here, uh, not reverse with just a little bit and then you go in and sell may actually be very risky. You can do that, but it is really risky to do that. So um, now what I'm drawing with a red line is the A to B line for the geometric ABC pattern. Uh, but then the B to C, the C hasn't happened yet. So we are waiting for the C to happen, okay? So I, I um, definitely hope it goes up and go to this area because let's measure the C point using the Fibonacci ratio. If I do this in the Fibonacci ratio, it's a really a good area for the reversal to happen because if this was A right here, let me just, okay. If this was A, okay. Um, and you've got your B right here. Then you'll see as I pulled the Fibonacci ratio earlier on, the retracement would actually sit on to the 78.6% the C. If it does reverse, it's not reversed yet. So your C point, let me remind you, your C point has not happened. Your B to C is on its way, but the C point needs to only happen when it starts to reverse down. Then you can say that's the C point. At this moment, too early. It's just an expectation. It's just a hope at the moment, and it's not yet a trading decision. Okay, so we are waiting for the pattern to form uh, a ABCD. So as you can see, we had we have had 
an inverse cup and handle pattern. Then that didn't work quite well, but then it formed the head and shoulders pattern. Inside the heads and shoulder potential pattern, not yet a head and shoulder pattern because a C point here hasn't actually happened. But then inside this ABC, uh, inside this head and shoulders pattern, we find a probability of a geometric ABCD pattern to help you trade to the downside. So here, for example, now when we get the A to B equals C to D, okay, we call them uh, quadrilateral. So we take that and we just mirror that just so that we get an idea of how far your take profit could go to, okay, or your D point. Your D point is your take profit area, okay. Hi there, Mr. Murugesan, how are you doing? Okay, welcome. Don't worry if you're late because uh, we, we've got this uh, recorded as well. So you're okay, don't worry. Uh, so we're talking about goal at this moment of time and uh, just to help traders out there on how do you actually plan to trade goal and what are the patterns that we have seen? What's the progress so far? So that's basically uh, what we have um, discussed about so far. Um, at the moment for the Friday's uh, webinar. So here, for example, we are looking at uh, gold versus the US dollar on the four hour chart. And I see a potential of gold um, reaching down again. Uh, the expectation is a downtrend overall. But then as of now, I mean, we, we will experience very low liquidity frozen um, platform for gold because market is closed for gold as well. Uh, so then uh, today and then until Monday, I expect because Easter Monday as well, I expect that uh, most of the European markets, UK market, US, Canada, uh, are all going to be slow. Uh, going to be public holidays, holiday seasons as well. Uh, so that will actually impact the market and the market will be very slow. So um, most um, probably Tuesday onwards, market will pick up. But then we need to actually be very careful with trading gold. Okay, So far, I mean, traders have kept safely trading gold they've been profiting quite a lot uh, with all these patterns and then a failed pattern but not really failed pattern a pattern that has actually not succeeded but then brought about a better pattern or a bigger pattern and that's again more trading opportunities so at this moment of time i'm talking about abcd pattern bearish abcd pattern inside a potential head shoulders pattern uh, that is forming. So at this moment of time, you will see um, just a little bit more correction of gold to go up. When I use the word correction, it means it's temporary. So it's not a change of trend. It's not to say that gold is going to go up and up and up. Even though you're seeing it on a particular time frame, a lot of traders, they get very excited and then they go on to one time frame and then they see candles going up and they say, oh, gold is uptrend. No, the trend is not uh, the same as what you see on one single time frame. You need to see it as an overall. As an overall, it is still downtrend for gold. It's still bearish. You still see a lot of um, lower highs and lower lows. What you see is happening at the moment is a potential reversal or correction of price of gold. So gold, yes, is going up a little bit, um, but then I suspect for it to actually go up to mirror the shoulder area. So how far can gold go up to? To the 1738 to 1741 area, uh, to mirror this area of the left shoulder. So now you've got a left shoulder, you've got the head, and then you've got the uh, second shoulder, the right shoulder forming. So in order for that to form, we need the price to move up from B to C. Inside the head and shoulder pattern, we have the bearish ABCD pattern. You guys notice that I'm repeating this because of uh, newcomers coming in to the webinar. So just so that I can recap and make that really clear for you guys so that when you guys get the recording, you know that you can actually uh, you know, rewind and uh, go to different parts and uh, still get what I'm saying clearly so that you don't miss um, the points here. Okay, so 
we've got the ABCD here. So um, with the geometric ABCD bearish pattern, as you can see, ABCD, we're expecting a fall, but then the fall is only expected after the C point happens. The C point hasn't happened yet. So we are still waiting for price to go up, reverse a little bit of few candle, then we can say, okay, it's got higher probability to fall. But then the probability for it to fall actually goes up even more and it's even higher probability if it goes up to the C point and then reverse and come down and come down and go closer to the centroid area. I will change the color right here. Okay, this green line here marks the centroid of the bearish ABCD geometric pattern. And that is at 1710. So under 1710, the probability of a fall gets even higher. Mm -hmm. And after it falls, under 1678, it gets even higher and there's more expectation of drop of gold to go even lower. Now, at this moment of time, um, maybe it is still not very negative for gold um, in terms of um, its future buying price because a lot of big central banks and all that, they are still buying heavily gold. When I say they are buying, they are basically buying on a cheap price. So of course, they want the price of gold to go down. So as the price of gold goes down, the more the buying that you guys and me as well cannot see what they are doing. So they are accumulating more and more gold with cheaper price of gold. So hence the reason price of gold is still not going up and going crazy like what other people are saying at 2000 and stuff like that 3000 maybe 5000 maybe 10000 we don't know when that day might come or will it come or not we don't know but then it's important for us as retail traders to actually write along whatever trend that is giving us because we are not um we're talking about physical gold here. We're talking about buying and selling the price speculating gold prices, but we don't really care what the banks are doing, right? Uh, it's not going to impact um, our uh, portfolio management or our trading because whatever they do, we just need to know how to write the trend, especially when you're trading um, gold on a Forex platform. So when you trade gold on a, on a, forex platform that's basically uh, where you can actually gain much more um, and on top of your physical gold or maybe you are buying gold uh, in a different way uh, invest investing in precious metal for example silver uh, palladium or anything like that or even it's physical or online stuff like that when you are on the forex platform uh, and you are doing this analysis with me you are also expanding your your portfolio and making money uh, in terms of riding the trend like for now with gold. So that's the wonders of trading in a Forex platform is that you can trade both ways. You can actually, if you are in the right side of the market, you can sell and the more it falls, the more money you make. Uh, if you uh, expect it to go up, you click the buy button, the more, mon the more money you make if it goes up and up and up. So you've got both markets as opposed to traditional stocks investing and all that, you are only um, able to actually, uh, I mean, mostly traditionally, to actually uh, expect market value or the stock's value to go up, then you gain that uh, differences of what you've invested before. So it's very different from Forex trading because Forex trading, you don't have that physical uh, ownership of whatever you are buying and selling, you're only speculating, okay, uh, prices. So hence the reason analysis is very important, both fundamental analysis, as well as technical analysis that I am teaching you right here, showing you and sharing with you as well. Um, also to keep you guys in track, um, intact with the signals and, and things that I share with you so that you are able to be guided on not only where to buy and sell, but also at the same time to understand how have I come up with that analysis and that trade signal. So in other words, you are able to not only get the fish, but you will learn how to fish uh, like what I have done or what I've shared to most of the traders.
out there. Okay, hope that makes sense. Now here, for example, um, now we're still talking a little bit about gold because the market is really slow um, at the moment, especially in the European markets. I mean, it's a holiday. I'm here in Cyprus, in Limassol. We're a little different because uh, it's orthodox. Uh, they are mostly Orthodox Christians here. So uh, usually the Catholic holidays is one month earlier. And then the Easter and the Good Friday and the everything for the Orthodox is one month later. So our Easter has not started yet. Uh, they're still um, uh, fasting at this moment of time. So this is basically uh, a little difference, one month difference with Orthodox. So Orthodox Christians are mostly in Greece, Cyprus, as well as Russia. So they are all uh, the uh, Greek Orthodox uh, style uh, of things. So not yet. So their Easter hasn't actually happened yet. So here we have got um, market really slow. A lot of brokers are, uh, because they're dealing with the international market, so the uh, Catholic uh, Christianity uh, holidays are much wider, more global. So then uh, the platforms, Forex platforms as well, you guys might find it to be uh, closed for gold trading or some very volatile uh, markets as well. Maybe um, some brokers, they, they would decide to still have currencies moving, but then, you know, most of it are closed at this moment of time. You have to check with your broker as well, because the it depends on the broker's operation, which country, which predominant clients they have uh, as well, you know, stuff like that. So there you go. Asian brokers, maybe uh, local ones are still operational, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but uh, this is where you can actually find a very big difference between your um, market making type broker with dealing desk and without dealing desk. Because the one with dealing desk and the one that can control the prices and the platform and all that, they might still be able to open because they control the market and the price. Uh, but then the ones that are international and uh, they are more governed, more solid ones and having liquidity providers that are international because the liquidity providers from banks like big banks, if they are closed, then you don't get that liquidity from them and uh, you cannot pass the A booking type uh, trades to them so then they are closed as well so this is a very good indication to actually know as well between the uh, true stp um, you know pure stp type uh, ecn type which basically means non-dealing desk okay non-dealing desk means that there's nobody sitting in front of the computer in the company dealing with the trades and manipulating prices that's basically what it means, you know, non-dealing desk, nobody dealing at the desk. Uh, so a non-dealing desk is probably much better. And uh, if it's more computerized uh, as well, then all the risk and all the prices gets passed on to the liquidity provider, which are the top banks, okay? So if that happens, then you are in, a, in better hands uh, with a broker. And uh, most of the times, local brokerages, uh, let's say in Indonesia, you have 80 local brokerages, local meaning Indonesian owners, okay? Uh, and they are basically mostly market making. Um, the reason is they play locally in the local market and uh, it's a regulated market in Indonesia. In Malaysia, it's a gray area. Forex is not regulated market yet. So then in Malaysia, we do have some brokers, uh, local brokers. You've got uh, bigger ones, medium size and some very small ones, but not as many. I think maybe you've got um, less than 10 actually active brokers in Malaysia, local ones, Malaysian owned. Um, but then most of them are also uh, market makers. Uh, but then with that, you know, it's it's good that it's local. And then, you know, if, if you can pass the cash or locally uh, to deposit and everything's fast and easy. But it's very important to know that if it is market making and it's very convenient at the very beginning, it might not 
be as convenient at the end later on when you start trading with them because you know spreads has to be widened uh, will be wide and also because they have a dealing desk that means they are more in control of your trades what happens is that sometimes in market making the bad market making one we're talking about right uh, is that they can freeze your platform while you trade and while you're trading and profiting they can easily freeze that and then you cannot click close your order and you cannot actually um, you know, process your withdrawal or anything like that. And after uh, the, the frozen has actually um, freed uh, or, or gets better, then you see that your price is on a negative. So um, then you missed out all that profit as well. So these are tricks uh, that have been applied by majority of uh, market making bad market making broker that has a dealing desk. So if you are visiting um, any local brokers, you know, don't tell them that you know about them, uh, about the difference between market making, dealing desk and all that. Just be curious and, and ask, oh, you know, uh, you have dealing desk, uh, you know, you have people to support and then they will tell you, yes, we have a very big dealing room uh, where we have about 10 dealers there and they will be very proud to announce that. But for us as traders, the more uh, dealing dealers you have in the dealing room uh, the more risky it is for us okay for us as traders because that actually means that the price is not a hundred percent passed on uh, your orders are not a hundred percent passed on to the liquidity providers like the top banks and all that uh, it is being passed on to the dealing room and the dealing desk will then uh, decide what price to give you, whether to, 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 to uh, stop your account, stop your withdrawal, uh, maybe because you're making too much money already. We don't uh, really want to process that yet. You know, all this kind of stuff is when you have dealing desk. Okay, so be very, very careful with this. Most of the uh, majority of the brokers, the big ones that have branches and operations in Malaysia, but they come from Cyprus, they come from the UK, they come from other parts. Now, they are mostly having both mar uh, market making, uh, good market making. Uh, maybe one person, two person in the dealing desk, but majority of it is all computerized and non-dealing desk. But then it depends as well uh, with what type of operation they want to operate on when they enter in Malaysia. So even a company like XM, really huge company, okay? Um, how they operate in Malaysia, for example, is mostly market making, but not too bad market making because they give back to the traders quite a lot uh, from the money that they make from traders in Malaysia. So um, that's actually quite good, not too bad. Then you've got other brokers as well. So uh, it depends, you need to investigate on, on that as well, okay? Uh, the other thing as well is that don't get um, overly excited with companies that are giving you loads of free gifts and bonuses and everything because you need to understand all these bonuses and stuff like that um, does not come from the broker it comes from the traders lost okay so the more uh, the broker are gaining from the traders lost the more they can give out to the traders in return. So it's not coming from the pockets of the brokers. So you need to understand that very, very well. And to be a trader, uh, you want to uh, you know, gain consistency, right? Consistent profit at the site for yourself. So you want to choose a broker um, that you can actually trust in terms of how they process your order, what type of broker they are, their connection relationship with the liquidity provider, um, dealing desk, non-dealing desk, um, as well as uh, their offerings in terms of your spreads uh, and things like that. So uh, this is the part that would actually pull your profitability down if you don't take care of it from the very beginning okay and you need to also you know know some people in within the broker or connected to the broker that can actually help you sort out issues you know communicate on behalf uh, of you when there is a little bit of a teething issues or any problems that can be resolved 
uh, basically you want somebody that you can connect with there. So um, I am that someone uh, for most of our fellow uh, Malaysians, Africans as well, uh, whereby I am here based in Limassol uh, representing uh, some brokerages here, but uh, predominantly BKFX at this moment of time. And uh, basically we are um, looking at um, servicing traders the best we are able to. And it's also important for me as a mentor to actually um, communicate with brokers or have a good connection with uh, certain brokers that would actually service my community of traders uh, well uh, in terms of not manipulating the systems, uh, processing withdrawals and deposits really fast, and uh, basically no hanky-panky. You know, this is the most important thing because I'm a trader myself. I know how it feels like to actually trade with a reliable broker. Okay, guys. So um, the reason I spoke about all these things as well is because the market is really slow and it's best for me to, uh, you know, give out and share some pointers uh, for traders to know as well about brokers, about your uh, trading style, about um, what type of brokers models they are, dealing desk, non-dealing desk, and things like that. Okay. All right. Any questions, guys? Because um, I think it was important for me to clarify um, about gold first. And uh, do you guys have got any questions about um, pairs that you guys are trading at this moment of time? Any questions at all? This market is closed basically and it's not moving. So it's probably best timing to uh, discuss about uh, you know, how the week has actually been for you guys. Any questions uh, on certain pairs or any challenges um, to troubleshoot your trades that I can help out with, feel free to uh, let me know. Okay, any questions? Mr. Kunan, you've got any questions you wanna help out? All right. We can take a look at GBP, JPY. Yes, um, this market is closed though, but uh, I'm on GBP, JPY already here. Uh, let's take a look at heat maps as well. Now, um, as we can see on the heat map itself, uh, we have got more participation on the selling side for other currencies versus the JPY. So JPY is still looking quite uh, strong on the upside. Let's take a look at top movers, heat maps. We get a bit of an idea. Then we look at GBP, JPY as a whole. We wanna look at GBP as a whole, JPY as a whole as well. Um, there's more buying as you can see. Uh, you see this change column here is negative. Negative means uh, selling. Uh, but selling of the first currency to the left, okay? If it is positive, that means buying, but buying of the first currency to the left. So here, if it's negative, negative to the USD, meaning selling the USD, buying the JPY. So this is what Forex is about. Forex is about clicking one button and it does two things. So if you click the buy button, you're actually buying the first currency to the left, which is your base currency, and it's going to sell the JPY um, automatically. Okay, but in this case, uh, we have got more selling of the dollar, which basically means that perhaps the market is <coughs> expecting the dollar to fall, so they're selling it. So all you need to know is that you want to sell currency that is depreciating in value, and you want to buy the currency that is appreciating, or you think and you forecast and analyze the market and think that it's got room to go up, then you want to click the buy button now because you're buying it cheap. So you want to buy it now before it goes up and up and up and up too high. Okay, so that is basically what you do in Forex trading. Okay, you buy, you expect something to go up, you buy, you expect something to fall, you sell. As simple as that. Okay, so okay, give me a second. All right, so um, here, for example, in um, in this heat, in this um, uh, top movers uh, table, we're seeing that um, we've got many currencies that have got, has got the JPY with it. So that actually means that most of the traders are trading pairs that has JPY. As you can see, the first three itself, USD JPY, Euro JPY, CHF JPY. Also, it is the 
non farm payroll today, right? I think it is still going on about non farm payroll. So with that, we might see um, some movement, but don't be surprised that the non farm payroll data may not move the market too much like other times, mainly because of the uh, Easter season right now, holidays as well, and its lack of market participation. So, but we don't know, maybe for some pairs it might, uh, but then, you know, market is closed for most. So that's probably the reason uh, as well, sorry, um, of it not being able to give you that, that movement as well. So it's market closed. So we are just looking at it um, to trade maybe from Tuesday onwards, not now, okay. Um, so yeah, so that's basically it. So now let's take a look a little bit on um, on the overall market before we take a look and dive deeper into GBP JPY because I suspect when market opens, uh, it will have a, a big enough gap uh, for GBP JPY, but we don't know whether the gap is on the upside or the downside. Uh, because with GBP, JPY, overall, as what I see technically, it looks like it's on an uptrend, very nice and very smooth on the uptrend. But we are looking at it not on a live market. So that is a little bit risky because anything can happen on Monday to actually just create all that because all these, these uh, indicators are lagging anyway. So they can actually change as of Monday. They can all be, you know, tangled or stuff like that so but as of now uh, as of market closed yesterday uh, or earlier today we can see that it's still rising high to the upside right so let me just um, because even if I were to look at the heat map now it wouldn't actually reflect um, really accurate data as well because of the markets uh, being closed today. So here, um, let me just, looking at it from a price um, action point of view, this is GBP, Great British Pound versus the Yen, okay? So here, if we are looking at the price now, uh, it stopped at, uh, it's still moving, but it's lack of participation is almost like it is closed, but it is uh, at 15294. So 15294, uh, let, I'm looking at it on a daily chart, I want to move to the left. Now, as it goes up, if I look to the left, there has been a fall of price at all this area here. So I want to look at it um, as a potential resistant area zone. Okay, so let me just... Okay. So here, for example, um, we've got one up there following this area here, it goes hand in hand with this area here and also on the dot of that area there. Um, I want to also draw another line to respect the uh, highest candle of that peak right there. Um, also, now this is the resistant area right there, the, the, the most, um, closest one we can see above the current price. So I would think that if we are looking at buying, it's probably safer to look at buying um, beyond 153.80 and above. So 153.90 or even 154.10. So I'm looking at it um, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit skeptical of the fact that it might just go up straight away, um, uh, you know, even after market open next week, because we see that there are some resistant area right there. Um, but the other thing we can do is very quickly, we can go on to the uh, stochastic oscillator, and we look at whether or not there is a chance of a reversal using divergence of the stochastic, okay? So here, for example, let me just check we may have a bit of a divergence because you see here, this is this is uh, the high here. We've got higher high here, which is no divergence there, no opposite, but then we have opposite down here, you see? Um, because this one here reflects that low, right? So that low connects to a higher low, right? 
but this low here connects to a lower low. So there is divergence, there is opposite. What it tells us is that there may be a possibility of a reversal. So don't get overly excited with the buy for GBP, JPY because it might actually reverse. Now, we look at, we look to the left and we use this current price right here and we just slowly scroll to the left and look at whether or not with this current price, has there been a very big fall with a single bearish candle? We've got one there, but that started there. So we want something that has started. Let me just see. I'm now on a weekly chart as well. So let's see. Okay. Now on the weekly chart, it tells us very clearly that there will be a potential big, big sell at, a, at an area that I will mark it for you. And you can only see that on a weekly chart. So there is a long bearish candle that has actually happened. And that happened, we are looking only at the body of the bearish candle. That happened uh, in 2016. Okay, in June 2016, okay, a couple of years ago. Now, with that, uh, we can use that as a reference point to tell us that there is a selling zone. There is a selling zone where it has been quite powerful with the body of the bearish candle for GBP, JPY, okay, um, that is about 1,400 plus pips. Okay, and that is very significant. So that is a bearish zone that I would like um, most of the traders trading GBP, JPY to actually be aware of this. Why you need to be aware of this is because in case the price actually falls and enters this zone under uh, 151.80 and below and enters this rate line and coming in, that actually means that they may be attracting, this zone may actually attract more sellers in. So then you know, okay, you need to actually be careful with your buy plan. Your buy plan may not work anymore, even though it may look like a, a, a correction, a reversal only, but it may not be a correction reversal, it may actually be even a change of trend because it's a 1,400 plus worth of uh selling volume in the past they may repeat this um, order again so this is very very important for you guys to understand that okay uh, so here rate i'm just going to cover this area here with a red box just to tell you that this is a red selling zone okay so in case price comes into this zone you need to be very careful and not actually be overexcited thinking that it is still on a buy and I want to buy and uh, this is just a reversal. So we don't want to think like that when price actually comes into the zone. Okay, For now, you can still have a little bit of hope that uh, it is bullish. It is still bullish, of course, with majority. I mean, but we are analyzing it from we are analyzing it as though it is a Saturday, Sunday, because, you know, market is like almost closed. So we are not really making good decision plan. But then in terms of price action wise, just to tell you where the zones are, yes, it's quite good, potentially. Now let's look at four hour chart for GBP, JPY. So Four hour chart on GBP, JPY. You see, when I go on the four hour chart, I cannot pull back a lot with the data. So then I go onto the daily chart, and then I want to look at more data. Okay. Uh, if I cannot, again, I want to look at more data again, I go on to um, a higher time frame so I get more data. So then I can look to the left and see more candles. So here, for example, what I want to look at now is I want to look at whether or not there is a bullish candle uh, in the past, a very powerful bullish candle from the price right now from the price right now, which is 152, 91, 92, which is moving, which is moving. Currencies are moving, but very slow, it's almost dead. So um, here, for example, if I look just to the left, let me just 
go to the right first. I just want to make sure. Okay. And if I go back to the left here, I want to look at bullish, single bullish mother candles with a strong body from the price now. We've got one right here, you know, from the price now, didn't go up quite a lot, uh, but I want to look at one that maybe has begun, okay? At the price now, okay. So here, for example, I'll take, I'll get rid of these lines right here, and I'm going to use blue line to mark the bullish zone, and we've already marked the bearish zone for GBP JPY. Second, ah, okay, so you have a set all right for sell trend at 150.35 for GBP JPY. Okay, um, pending order. Well, you can cancel that actually. You can cancel that because since it's a pending, maybe you need to make a, a fresh new start um, from what will actually happen with GBP pairs starting next week because the GBP pairs has got correlation with gold prices as well. As you know, gold prices have actually gone down. Um, and uh, also we are waiting for more um, improvement bullishness for usd pairs so we want to see whether that happens or not first okay so you can cancel that for now and then maybe we make a fresh new uh, pending orders or even market execution orders okay it's better that way because if not then uh, what if it gets triggered uh, all of a sudden and it's actually total opposite of a plan that we need to do next week okay all right so this is actually a very good point when you um are um, on a Friday is probably best when market closes, uh, just before market closes, to actually review and look through your pending orders. Some of them needs to be closed out, just close them all out. If it's too far away from the plan uh, and stuff like that, and may actually cause us to change our plan of action, then you just have to close them. But it's good to review. Uh, it's good for traders to review all your pending orders as well and close them if it's not uh, following as planned on a Friday, uh, especially before uh, before um, market closes, and that's basically what I do because I'm I'm a pending order type trader for myself. I never, I almost never trade uh, for myself um, on market execution. Only if I'm using practice account or you know um, I'm practicing with with the traders and to show them. Um, to show them something or to actually guide them and train them. Then I use it and I trade at that time basically for, for them. Okay, so um, okay, we've got Mr. Alfred just came in. Hi there, Alfred. Don't worry, we um, you are late, you're just about uh, for us to finish but uh, don't worry we've got we've got it all covered and uh, we've talked a lot about gold as well and you can view the recording shortly okay don't worry okay so um here let's uh, take a look at gbp jpy again and i'm just hunting for a bullish mother candle to the left okay so um what i can see is that we have a mother candle here, not too long, not very interesting, but let's see, in terms of number of pips from opening price, closing price, okay, not too bad, 700 plus pips worth of mother candle right there, but it started at 15362 and above, okay, now we are at 15, um, let's just see, we are at... 15290 area. Okay. So 153.50 uh, psychological number and above, we may be looking at buying interest only at that area. Okay. Uh, because that's where we had power in the past. Uh, anywhere before that, no power yet. So it might even reverse at the moment. So we don't know because see, it's, it's actually reversed here. We are very close to 15300 number as well. Okay, so that is basically it. Uh, we need to be careful uh, with GBP, JPY as well. And 
I will mark off the zones. Okay. So now I will mark off uh, this zone, by zone in blue uh, square, as a blue square. Maybe a little light blue. Okay. So I've got blue square as your by zone area. Okay, this is from a single bullish mother candle right there. Okay, that's the zone from 15360 and above. So the buying should actually take place 15360 above. Then you don't get too uh, trapped and confused with what the trend is. By then, if it goes in there and start going up and up, then you know as well that the three lines as well will be up and you are in a better position to understand that the market is bullish for GBP, JPY. At this moment of time, there may be a reversal. That's why it's in a black hole here. Okay, this is a black area right here. Current price hasn't entered the blue zone for the buy, hasn't, hasn't really come back down and, and then uh, bearishly entered the bearish zone in the red. Okay, so this is probably the best way to map out your trading zone based on mother candles as well. And then later on, we add on other skills, uh, other, other techniques uh, using the geometric patterns. And then we confirm with other indicators and stuff like that. When it has gone into the right full zone, then we plan. Okay, then we actually uh, come up with trading ideas or trading signals. So, um, here, for example, uh, the, there may be a bit of a challenge as it goes up here, for example, right? Let's say it goes up and up, 153.60, went up and up and up. As it goes up, you need to ask yourself, okay, I'm buying, I'm profiting, but where can it actually go down a little bit? Where can it actually reverse? Where can I exit for now um, and, and enter later on here? This is where you can exit. Okay, so you need to exit at 155.40 exactly uh, before the, uh, what do you call that, before the 155, uh, 155.50 psychological number. Okay, so I'm going to put here 155.60. 155.60, you can buy again, but then this is basically your resistant area right there. But you've got um, first stage of a buy, you can make about 100 plus plus, 170 plus pips even, okay? But after it enters the blue zone at 15360 and above, because we don't know really what's going on with the vaccination uh, position in the UK, in Great Britain, uh, we don't know yet on other uh, economic related data as well because the current economic situation is uh, largely influenced in the UK uh, by all this COVID situation and all these vaccination plans and, and help from Europe and stuff like that. And also we need to look at any, whether there are any interest rate decision making as well. But as, as far as I know, with this holiday period, it's a bit slow down on the data side of it. Okay, that's why they've made most of their decisions uh, and stuff like that before uh, earlier. Okay, guys, I think I will end the session um, in a couple of minutes if you guys have got no questions. Any questions at all? Is this clear, Mr. Kunan, for your GBP, JPY, uh, buy zone and also sell zone? Okay, you can watch the recording as well. And I'll just zoom in a little bit so it gets a bit clearer with the price action. Okay, perfect. Good. All right. And uh, for Mr. Alfred, I have actually explained gold uh, position and everything else uh, so that we know what to do, but only from Tuesday onwards, uh, if I'm not mistaken, where the market will resume its activities because Monday is also a public holiday and the whole of Europe, UK, Canada, US as well, they're all in holiday mode at this moment of time. And hence the reason uh, we've got slowdown of the entire platform uh, in all of the brokers, most of the brokers. So that's basically it. Okay. All right. And it's a good chance for us to rest and enjoy, uh, you know, our time with families, um, loved ones as well in this time. And, you know, you guys are probably busy with church activities as well. And for our children to join 
uh, all family and friends at church and stuff like that. So that's probably the best time for us all to do that. And then we can get going on to our trading again next week from Tuesday onwards, especially. Okay, Monday, I'll still do the Monday review, week ahead review, and just so that we get a better view of what's upcoming for the whole week. Okay, any questions at all? Alfred, you've got any questions on your current trades? Gold, I've covered it for you. Any other pairs? Okay, let's see. Just before I um, end the session, uh, probably we'll take a look a little bit again on the top movers there. As I've mentioned, we are having more concentration on JPY pairs, but uh, more appreciation of the JPY, meaning bullishness of the JPY. Other pairs are looking like they are bearish against the JPY. So that actually means that it's probably a little bit of a risk off mode. That means they're turning off the risk. They're, they're going off from having the risk appetite. So they are investing into, uh, most traders investors are investing into safe havens like the Japanese yen. Um, 3 p.m. Ah, yes, because we uh, it's no, no longer six hours. Uh, as of, I think, last week, we've changed the time Sunday. Um, yeah, so it's five hours now between Malaysia and Cyprus. Uh, it's, it's five hours now. Okay, so I'm at 10.14 or 10.15 now. So you should be at 3 p.m. Yeah, you should now be at 3 p.m. It used to be six hours, that's why. So... Yeah, no problem. From now on, uh, basically, you just need to know that it's five hours now. Yeah, no, it's 9 a.m. Yeah, 9 a.m. Cyprus time. Yeah, 9 a.m. Cyprus time, which is 2, 2 p.m. Uh, Malaysian time. Yeah. No problem. We've got the recording anyway. And it's also really slow market. It's not moving, so we've not really uh, discussed much about other about the trend, about the other pairs, because it's just not worth doing so, because it's just almost dead, actually, the market. Yeah, I'm ending it now. Yeah, we can take a look at GBP, AUD, no problems. I've, we've taken a look at GBP, JPY. Um, upon Mr. Kunan's request, we'll go on to GBP, AUD. Mr. Alfred's request, GBP, AUD. Right, there you go. Okay, um, let's take a look at GBP AUD. Before that, um, I just want to look at, take this one down, stochastic, that one down. Mm, okay, right. Um, from a stochastic point of view, there are no divergence, but let's look at trend first, okay? Let's look at trend first. Now, trend-wise, uh, looking not too bad, uh, looking like it's biased to the upside for GBP AUD. Um, and if I compare that to the four hour, it is again getting stronger to the upside. But again, you know, we are analyzing it as though we are on a Saturday, Sunday, because the market is really, really slow. So we don't really know the extent to the change on Monday as well, okay? But this is just a rough analysis, GBP, AUD, of what we can see now. But I uh, just want to warn you that it may actually change drastically or it may actually be following what we are saying now. Uh, that we don't know. So, um, but as of now, GBP, AUD, looking like, one hour um, and looking like four hour is stronger than one hour in terms of uptrend. So the uptrend is sort of looking like it's building up. We are at the price of 1.8165. So what I would do is I will mark off two prices. One is uh, 1.8150, which is the psychological number under the current price. So 8150, I'll mark that. Okay. And then upwards, I will mark the 8180 area okay just so that you know that the gbp aud price is trapped between the 8150 and the 8180 psychological number that is the first step that you can actually do so that we know where we stand what's our current position where it has to break out to so that we know that if it breaks out 
go above 8180 and reaches 8190 or even uh, 8210, then we've got a better chance for um, participating into a buy. Okay, so your buying price would be better above 8180. So 8190 and above would probably be a better buying price for you. If we look at to the left based on four hour chart, we do have a bullish candle a uh, bullish mother candle that gives us the power. There is power in that zone. So the buying zone there, uh, based on a good buying price as well, will be from 81.80 right up to 82.50 uh, area. So it's probably best for us to exit if we were to buy 82.40, right? So there you go, I'll mark 82.40 as well. There you go. All right. Then what I will do is I will also mark the zones there in red. It's better to mark it in red. No trading zone in a way, okay? Or reversal zone or support resistance zone. So there you go. I'll mark one up there. So if you are on a buy, you need to exit before, before price enters that red zone area there, okay? All right, now next one is here. Okay, there you go. So no trading zone there. So let me just, so you've got your trading opportunity starting at 81.90 right to 82.40. Let me mark it a little bit more accurate. 81.90, so I'm just gonna... 90, okay. There we are, a bit better. So that's no trading zone there. So you are only trading at this black area right here for the buy. So once prices have actually um, broken out of this red zone area, 81.90, you can buy, you can take profit, 82.40. Now, this is based on four hour chart. So we're looking at potential pips wise, if it goes to your direction there, about 50, about almost 50 pips, but about 46, uh, 40, 48 pips, about 48 pips or so on the buy side of it for GBP AUD, okay? But this, we need to wait a little bit um, just so that we get a better idea as of Monday onwards to know whether or not it's really bullish, whether we, we never know whether there's some surprises in terms of news and economic data and various other vaccination type news uh, in the UK, because the UK is relying heavily on the help from the eurozone and if the eurozone countries in the european zone is suffering or struggling uh, of their own problems uh, then they may not be able to help the uk as much then the uk will be stuck with that help and then that would then uh, reduce the the probability of uptrend for the gbp okay so that's why i want us to wait a little bit on the technical side of it uh yes we can do that we can like you know, um, do what we have done just now, but we need the fuel uh, to move the market to the upside from the fundamental and the new side of it. Um, so over the weekend, we can get the news and we, if we listen to, uh, you know, to the radio or the TV and if they're talking about what's going on in the UK and stuff like that, especially with the vaccination um, uh, type news. And if the vaccination type news is appearing to be positive, then, we need to wait until that news gets reflected, marinated into the market on Monday onwards. Then we know, okay, we've got a reason to believe on two perspectives, the technical side of it and the fundamental news side of it. Then we trade, then we enter, then we should be in a better position to actually profit than actually to, loss, to lose in the market, okay? All right, so let's see. Um, no, not, not today. 
Uh, you don't need to do the pending. If you want, you can, but most likely you may have to change that pending order. Um, because Mr. Kunan also asked about GBP JPY. He had the GBP JPY pending order since last week, but then because of the analysis as of today and most recent ones, it may change that pending order. So uh, my advice as well is that um, don't do pending orders on Fridays uh, as well. And also to close all your pending orders as well on Fridays, uh, if it is very far away from the plan, okay? Because uh, it might get triggered and then trap you as well. So uh, pending orders, you can actually do it on Monday itself, uh, just before market open or when market open, just before London open, because you are always going to be early uh, for the London open. Uh, because you know um, you guys are in Asia and five hours difference, at seven hours difference with the UK London Open timing as well. So London Open usually is eight a.m. their time. Uh, so eight a.m. their time, um, it's uh, six a.m. my time here, which is eleven a.m. your time in Malaysia. So um, you've got a lot of time to actually plan. Because um, uh, if we plan any pending orders or any trades and stuff like that, especially on a Monday, it's probably best to plan that um, just before London Open or during London Open, just so that we get more data because the highest transaction that happens in the Forex market is actually in London, not in New York, not in Chicago, it's in London. Yeah, it's better to wait till Monday so then you don't get trapped um, because my... Um, my guess is that uh, because it's holiday period, you know, and it's really slow, but there is a timing that they want to pick up their business and they want to trade as well, the bigger boys and all that. So uh, I think we need to write along their, their kind of schedule as well. So here, for example, uh, we are Friday 2nd. Let me just check on to next week's calendar. So next week's calendar, advanced filters. Um, this week's next week. So if I look at next week um, on high impact, okay, next week, let's take a look at the date, right? Um, let's say we want to always take into consideration Sunday the 4th as well, because sometimes some news are released on a Sunday, like in Japan and all that. Uh, 4th until the 9th. So 4th of April, yes, uh, until the 9th. Okay. Then we apply that uh, impact. Okay. So it's really slow uh, on... Uh, on Sunday, nothing there. We got a bit on Australia, but nothing to worry about. But Monday, we've got some data, but the most um, high impact one is for the US. So we do have US high impact. So maybe a little bit of volatility for US dollar and also gold as well. Okay, because of all these, because of the data, we've got a group of data coming out, but it's mainly manufacturing oriented. So we've got one there, um, but then on Tuesday onwards, we've got a few, uh, we've got two. Uh, we've got mainly for Australia on Tuesday, then Wednesday. So it's not too bad. We've got some volatility to expect, a little bit, I would think on Monday, uh, at least it's not totally dead. Um, and Friday next week, yes, we've got a few. Uh, Canadian employment numbers, I think, the uh, Chinese uh, consumer price index. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, not too bad as well. Again, Canadian. So I would think that the Canadian one would actually be moving a lot, Canadian pairs. Um, and then to look out for um, USD numbers, um, obviously, and then Australian numbers as well. So not too bad. The, the news is not too dead on Monday, not totally the hit kind of uh, feeling, but yeah, some movement, but then it's probably good for us to still plan uh, for Monday itself, at least we get some price action and all that, but then to plan the trade and put all the pending orders, we can do that on Monday itself. Okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll do that on Monday. Because um, as we can see, you know, we've got a lot of uh, lack of participation in the Asian market. It's coming into the European market. We've got some, but mainly against the JPY type pairs. Uh, we don't see the USD as well. Not too bad, but we've got more most 
action is coming from the USD and Canadian side of it, despite the holiday right there, but not too good though. I mean, not, not too, the volume is just sort of dead. I mean, we've got all the brokers as well resting, so it's a bit difficult. Okay, Mr. Kuna, no problem. Thank you. I'm going to end the session anyway. Okay. All right. So that's it. Uh, let me just go back to your GBP AUD, Alfred. Uh, we, I think you get the idea right there. So we are aiming in that area, but we need to look at Monday, how things goes, and then we can plan ahead much better. But you have a, there, if, if the market goes well in terms of uh, fueling the bullish market, we are looking at 100 plus plus pips. So, which is good. You can write on that, uh, but not at this moment of time. We need more confirmation uh, this time. Okay, no problem. Most welcome, Alfred. Okay, um, wishing you guys a um, good Friday, blessed Friday. Um, pray for you all and pray for us all. And uh, uh, have a good Easter Monday as well and a good weekend. And uh, be with family and things like that. And in any way, anything you want to uh, ask, you, know, you just can do that. Um, directly to me on telegram so anytime no problems okay guys with that i want to end the session and i want to say a big thank you for attending my session today and take care and we'll speak again on monday take care you too bye bye